Hi everyone. Um, today I'm looking back at one of the things that if you're a kid in the 70s, 80s through to the mid 90s, one of the things that would have been highlight of your week, definitely one of them, was Saturday morning TV. And here in the UK, um, we had two main offerings. Back in the times when there was only three TV channels, yes, remember that. Um, for those of you that do, we had the BBC's multicoloured swap shop presented by Noel Edmonds, Maggie Philbin, Keith Chegwin and John Craven. And on the other side, ITV, the other side we used to call it, makes it sound like a out-of-body experience. But no, it was just the main opposition channel we called the upper side, opposite side, ITV. And their Saturday morning offering for the kids was Tiz Was. I wonder if any of you know or perhaps remember what Tiz Was stood for. I will tell you, but to find out, you'll have to wait till the end of the video. Now, Tiz Was was presented by Chris Tarrant, Sally James. You had Bob Carroll Spit the Dog, uh, the comedian Frank Carson, Lenny Henry started, Sylvester McCoy featured, John Gorman, there's a whole gang of them. And also very well, muchly remembered, was a character called the Phantom Flanflinger. It's quite a tongue twister, I'll admit. He was a guy that used to go around, he was dressed completely in black from head to toe, sheets or cloth. Uh, you never saw him apart from his eyes and his mouth. He never spoke. There was a whole gang of them. But uh, there was one particular guy that was the leader. And their sole function was to go around drenching people with buckets of water and covering them in custard pies. Or as they were called on the show, flans. You had kids from universities that would queue up to go on the show to be put in a cage and have buckets of water chucked all over them. You would have all sorts of crazy sketches where um, Lenny Henry would um, impersonate, for example, David Bellamy, the famous naturalist, Dr. David Bellamy. And uh, that would be for a segment called Compost Corner. Everyone would shout, Compost Corner back. <laughs> so it'd be him and Chris Tarrant. And for example, because it was a gardening theme sketch show segment, you'd have, for example, kids dressed as flowers, standing in oversized plant pots, having soil put around them and then covered in water to help them grow. And uh, Lenny would be speaking like Dr. David Bellamy, so it'd be like, what would be great, nice quest? This plant really is incredible. He'd be talking like that. He'd also have a character who was Jamaican, who would wear a Rastafarian hat. If you don't know what that is, kids, Google it as we say nowadays. And uh, that particular character would go around saying everything was okay, but you can't really go around, you know, acting like that much now because, you know, you're worried about the whole being racist and thing. But back then it was pure fun. And he had a thing about eating condensed milk sandwiches. Why this was the case, goodness knows. But that was another crazy thing. Also, he used to impersonate Sir Trevor MacDonald, the great legendary newsreader. He'd sit behind a news desk with gigantic glasses to uh, take the mickey out of Sir Trevor. And nine times out of ten, his uh, news desk could be in the middle of the cage and all his news items would be jokes. And so he'd be absolutely drenched in water in response to the... Uh, to the jokes, the so-called news items. And it was just the most crazy show you could possibly think of. Sure, you had your competitions, you had your cartoons, all the rest of it. You'd have pop bands performing their latest songs. But all the anarchy stuff with the custard pies and the water and everything else just made it crazy. You'd also have people like Michael Palin doing sketches on there. As I said, Sylvester McCoy would sometimes feature. There was a sketch where he believed he was actually a car. 
So whenever Chris or Sally asked him questions, he'd just reply with engine noises or car horn sounds and things of that nature. It was just absolutely bonkers. And it's that show, luckily, on video and DVD form um, that we're still lucky to enjoy. Definitely by DVD, because there are two DVDs that we're looking at today. The first one was called Best of Tis Was. And this is actually made up, essentially, of the three VHS releases um, that came out originally. The best of, the best bits, more of the best bits, and Tis Was Comedy Capers. Those three videos, um, they're basically put together on this DVD on a omnibus format, so it's continuous. So you get um, a good couple of hours of material, sketches and a lot of the craziness that it, the show is known for. Then, and this second one is a lot harder to find. This one was Tis Was Reunited. And what this was essentially was they had a one-off reunion show I believe it was in the mid-90s on a Saturday night. And it was a live reunion show. All the cast of presenters was reunited. Yes, the Phantom Flanflinger came back as well. And as did a lot of people that used to be featured on their uh, programme, both celebrity and not. In fact, there's a little, uh, there was a kid on the show, one of the clips that's, shown on the DVDs, uh, he sang Bright Eyes from uh, Watership Down, dressed in a rabbit costume, one of the cutest things you've ever seen um, that's featured on here. But basically, with Reunited Disc, you get the whole reunion show, you get a 15-minute documentary, how Tears Came to Was, the whole production of it. You get a good, I'd say, between... 15, 30 minutes worth of um, unbroadcast studio footage with a lot more craziness, um, all sorts of extra stuff. So it was a very fitting way to remember the show, um, if you're a huge fan of the show. But this second one, the reunited DVD, is very hard to get. And I was extremely lucky that I managed to find it on eBay. It certainly wasn't cheap, but I only knew about um, the reunion show because of coming across it by accident on YouTube. And I was just having a general nose to see if, if there was any sign of it commercially. And yes, I was able to get it. And in celebration, I also at the time got a Tiswas t-shirt with the Phantom Flan Flinger on it. But... Unfortunately, I've not been able to find it and dig it out in time for day, today's recording. Otherwise, we would have worn that too. But uh, what a fantastic mental show. And uh, I was going to tell you, wasn't I, what Tiz was actually stood for. So if you stay with me all the way through me chatting about the show and the DVDs, here's your reward if you didn't know. Tiz was actually stood for Today is Saturday watch and smile so there you go on that one now i'm gonna set you all a challenge if uh if you can and i'm gonna take part in this as well so if none of you find the answer i will endeavor to who was the real identity who was the actual person behind the phantom phantom flan flinger put your teeth in frank so let's go online, let's Google, let's everything else, and let's try and find out his true identity in time for our Hangout Get Together video for this month on Sunday, 4 March. I know we're practically into April now, but because I was ill last week, weren't able to do Hangout any earlier, so we'll be back in our little bar setup, and I'll be answering your questions, giving you uh, some heads up of things we've got coming onto the channel, things of that nature, answering your comments, and we'll all try and find out together who just the uh, 
Flan Flinger actually was, and maybe even what he's up to nowadays, if he's still about. So we'll all see together if we can find that out. And in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give us a like, your comments, subscribe as always, and I will see you for our hangouts on Sunday night at 6. Okay, cheers, everybody.